Good morning, Philippines. Well, Sinologue Festival is happening here. It's the 13th of January, Saturday, 2024. And the kids are out of school for the weekend. And the party continues here in the Philippines. It's more fun in the Philippines. Never forget that. I think the Filipina P forgot that. What happened, P? You went to America and... They beat the crap out of you? You've changed all your views about men, about relationships? You're sick, girl. Who killed the Filipina P? What a bright star she was while she lasted. Let me just give you some stats on marriage and divorce. First of all, in the Philippines, well, let's start off with the West, okay? North America. 50% of first marriages end in divorce. 65% of second marriages end divorce, and 73% of third marriages end in divorce. So, you don't, it doesn't get better the third time around unless you make radical changes. Now, in the Philippines, even if you're not married, if you're just cohabitated, the chances of your reunion being successful are 12.8%. But if you're married legally in a church from day one, it, right, it drops to 2.3% of those marriages fail. So marriage is a commitment in the Philippines. So I'm on my third marriage. So my chances of failure are 73% being Canadian. But my wife, it's her first marriage of 2.3%, her first marriage. If you do the math, you add the two together and divide by two, we got a combined rate of 37.65%. So my third marriage here in the Philippines still has a better chance than my first marriage in Canada. So why would anybody ever want to get married in Canada? And 40% of marriages with children even end in divorce in Canada. And what happens with that? You got about 18% of the kids in Canada are raised in single parent mother families. There's no boundaries given by men. So they get all their impressions of what it is to be a man from video games and from movies, Netflix, and you get what you call a super macho male. He's more likely to beat up his mother and his sisters, run away from home, cause trouble, because he's never learned boundaries. Dad never dragged them off to Boy Scouts or Cubs, never learned any discipline in his life. Unless the army gets a hold of him, that poor soul's lost. He's going to be buried in some woke culture trying to identify himself as a uh, he, she, or something stupid like that. It's a cause of all kinds of mental stress on children. So, P, don't give up on marriage. Marriage is the saving grace of society. It's actually the only reason for our existence is a union between a man and a woman. Now, granted, in a world of almost eight, well, eight billion people, it's hard to validate the desperate need for more souls to be born on this planet, but don't forget that that's our biologically engineered purpose. Forget about AI and robots and, and uh, well, what are you, you're going on about uh, hypergamy. That's, that's a Chinese trait uh, that's coming abo uh, abroad to North America ever since women got the, the vote. Um, a lot of women would give up their vote just to have a man who would stand up for them and be in charge. But a lot of them, like you say, P, are saying, I got my own money now. I don't need your protection. Oh, yes, you do. More so now than ever, because what you're creating is an army of undisciplined bratty boys who go around neighborhoods, form gangs, cause trouble, and it's only going to get worse until everything falls apart. That's the cyclical nature of societies. So, for those of you who have traditional values, may God bless you. And uh, just want to point out that uh, having conservative traditional values will, will make you statistically a happier person. Conservatives, by nature, are happier than liberals. Um, and a lot of liberals are disgruntled youth who didn't get opportunity. And... Uh, Eventually, when the opportunity presents itself and they grow, they'll become conservatives. 
you become more conservative as you get older. As my father used to say when I told him I, I thought communism was a good idea, he said, I'm proud of you, son. At 15, you should be thinking like that, to share your stuff with your fellow man. But one day you'll learn uh, about greed and human nature. And if you still think the same way when you're 30, I'll be deeply concerned. So there's a time for thinking a certain way. And as far as socialism is concerned, socialism is the nature of every family. Every family is socialist. You, all the resources, the, the complaints, the trials and tribulations are all shared by the family. When the family falls apart, socialism falls apart. And you drift out into society expecting that it to be just like home. No, the world is more competitive than your family. Your, your dad, if he was around, would know that. And your mom, who's now working, thinking that she's an independent woman, has just made herself a slave to the system. Um, she's not going to help you out with finding that route out. So, men, you have to provide boundaries. And, yeah, being hated comes with a job, you know? I hate my dad. Yeah, but when they hit... 40 and they have kids of their own, they start to realize maybe you didn't have it all wrong after all. But it's a long wait. And maybe that's why after the age of 48, men are happier than women overall. So there's a lot of bitter old ladies out there with their cats and their plants trying to figure out what they did wrong or what went wrong in their world. When really, they just wouldn't leave a man alone wouldn't leave him to be as he was. The man didn't change like he thought he would. You did. You changed your mind. And part of that is biological as well. I'm sorry, ladies, you can't help yourselves. Um, no, it's not me. I know I'm just an amazing piece of male flesh. No, the fact is you're programmed by nature. Uh, the classical term is the seven-year itch. Basically, it's that a primate at about seven years old can forge and find itself, find its way around in the jungle by itself. It doesn't need uh, the, the father or the mother around. So that detached woman where she can find, for genetic purposes, another uh, male of the species to procreate with and diversify the genetic pool, thus preserving the species. So you're pre-wired for that, girls. And monogamy uh, is a concept only brought on by uh, advanced Western civilization. Polygamy and other forms of open uh, relationship. Before society got uh, disciplined and cultured by men who went out and fought wars to protect yourselves, who built this, this civilization that you now enjoy. Yes, it was men that did that. So... You know, when you go around saying you don't need a man, you need a man more than ever. You just don't know it. And uh, there's a lot of women with regret. But guys, you got nothing to lose. I mean, nature made it so you can, the whole world's your toilet. You can pee anywhere. You don't have to sit down. You don't have to be constrained. Um, you don't have the societal pressures that women do socially. So, And for the Philippine to pee, who I once thought was a bright light in an otherwise gloomy uh, perspective of negative sayers for the world. You went to America once and you come back with this crap saying that, yeah, marriages are over and better to be alone and you don't need a man. You've been childless too long. Somebody marry this girl and give her children so she can re-find herself. She had it once. I mean, she was so pro-Filipino marriage, and now it's like, nah, I don't need a man. Uh, I think you need a man more, more than ever, P. Find a good one. Hopefully you found some guy in, in America who's going to make it all happen for you. So is the Filipina dead? Well, the one I knew is definitely in a coma right now. Somebody please revive the girl. We love you, P. Please come back to the, into the light. Stay away from the dark side. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll get more content for you. All the best. Have a great day, and someone save that girl.